Okay, hi everybody, I'm back for part two. As you can see that this will look much different from where I left you off at the wee hours of this morning. We're now into the evening, it's about 20 after 10, so it's just this is the uh, quietest part of the night too, and, um, and or the early morning, so. And I'm up in the spare room with the window open so you can probably hear some of the traffic. But um, it is kind of a nice quiet. So as you can see, I've got um, the colors are nice and dry. And do you see what I did? So this, you know, this sort of um, little project is more than just an hour long, right? I mean, this is a kind of a nice meditative, have fun, create, you know, that sort of thing. And you'll see also that I added, this is a white gel pen here a gel pen in here. I did end up outlining what I did to begin with. I put it, I did it down below here because I thought, well, if it didn't look right, I can always just cut off the bottom. But I like it. It really punches it out. And then, of course, outlining everything else. But if you'll notice, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, see the reflection? You see her little... So what I did is I used a um, quinacridone gold for the color of the eyes, and then I went over with it with a complementary metallic from here. And these, of course, I used the mid yellow, which is the Hensa yellow medium. And then I went on top of that with a complementary yellow mica. And these, my little um, patches here, which is the warm yellow, which tends to be an orangey yellow, I actually went over top of that with this. So having so much fun. So, I, and I actually went over these, so it makes it crisper. I'm really liking it. It's a nice little fantasy, a little, uh, you know, highly functional. So what I did is I went around, I did clean up with a wet brush. I smoothed some things out. And you know, and then the this here is a combination of this, um, this dark, I don't know, what do you call it? That Windsor violet, right here, Windsor violet. And then I actually added, I got like a nice little. I use these. This is another little, smart little tidbit for you. If you can, this is just a little condiment, but it's porcelain. Porcelain is absolutely fantastic to use to mix paints in because it does not. Um, stain. It's easy to clean. It's very, it's nice, it's durable. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't um, spill over. But I've got, um, I've got a few of these in different various sizes. I've got one that's a bowl with three slots in it. I think maybe it was probably for pickles. But most of these you'll find in, an, in a condiment area. And if you can, I got this at um, a secondhand store for probably a dollar, but to buy these. Um, these porcelain um, dishes that are expensive. So I'm just going to reanimate again. I had them animated. They dried, reanimate, and dried. And I do have, I think, oh, and what I, I'm going to suggest is that if you have metallics, if you have the micas and you're going to use the micas, I actually have a separate um, water can for that because when you discharge, um, anything from it then that water becomes very um, full it's full of mica all the mica powder right and it floats around so you don't want to if you're going into another color you do not want to pollute that color with mica flakes from something else okay so you probably have three jars of water one for the dirty one for the clean and one for your metallic powders now I didn't get down to the studio so I'm just using the pens that I have and what I have on hand is this Black Pilot High Tech V7. It's a fine, so it probably works out to be a you know five, a point five. And then of course the um, I love the Uniball, the Uniball Signo Broad. Um, it is a great uh, white gel pen, way better than the jelly pens. This is uh, it does not get stopped up. It continues to flow all the time. I love this. And then, of course, you have to be careful. I usually typically use the Sakura um, Black India ink, and they dry, and they're permanent. You don't have to worry about it smearing. Once it's dry, uh, you can paint right over it without um, without spreading or smearing that um, 
the black ink and I probably if I went down to a certain area down because I can always cut this off oh okay so maybe once it's dry see that's not smearing at all you can't see that eh? not smearing so that's a good thing and so even in here in these little uh, uh, the little centers here I actually put that yellow on there as well but what else I, I would do on this is just to kind of give it a little bit you know wherever you're make it look more like it's a little seed pod of sorts you know add these little dots you can doodle up a storm you know you could have so much fun but um, yeah so now we're gonna move over to the little guy but what do you think you like her? I like it I think she turned out really lovely now I am gonna go over top of the horns though oh and the eyes I, I think I told you that um, I use the quinacridone gold which is another favorite color I know I've probably said that I have a, a probably a hundred favorite colors right now so I guess maybe I'm just a I like them all I love color so there's her little stumps but you know what I want to do I want to kind of draw these out just to kind of make them look like they're stubbly with little hairs on them because they are furry okay so I think that's pretty good and then um, like I said I used the the uh, Windsor Violet and I mixed it with some burnt umber to get a really nice dark dark color so it so it would be more of a cool black so I'm gonna put the pens away for for a bit and of course like I said I'm limited in space here so I don't want to crouch myself up and I'll just move that away and I'll just talk about it so with him now I'm just trying to decide what we can do with him I think I'd like to maybe stay with some cool colors you know what oh yeah let's do a turquoise like this here is really nice but I'm wondering if I have um, a, a cobalt turquoise let me look at my little stash that I brought with me <laughs> not so little like like I've just got I got piles over here too like piles of tubes over here too and you know you just go well I'm, okay I'm gonna bring some colors back with me and then Next thing you know, you go, oh yeah, I, I want that too. And oh yeah, I'm gonna take that with me too. This is another fun one. Uh, Moon Glow is a new uh, pigment, fairly new pigment from Danielle Smith. And it's got, it's beautiful. It's great to do mood, kind of really moody uh, pictures. It's got a combination of, um, it's, it's got like, it's a blue in there. Um, and a, I think it's there's a red with moon glow. Okay, what do we got? So we've got PG 18, so green, PB blue 19, which of course is my ultramarine blue. Um, we've got anthraquinoid red, which is PR 177. So you've got three pigments in there to make up this color. So the, obviously the proportions would be. Um, primarily blue with a touch of the red and the green in there to really give it that dark now green viridian green once upon a time before it was classed as a fugitive some people still use it and I'm not sure if those artists are just out of touch or if they don't care and they just continue to use it but I have I've chosen to go on the side of the customer um, and or um, authenticity when I paint something, especially if I paint something for sale, I, I want it to last, you know, for as long as I can. And um, so therefore, I'm not going to use a fugitive color if over time that color is going to disappear on my customer. Well, that's, I mean, the painting's just not the original then, is it? And I think that that's kind of fraudulent. I, um, I can't see it, but so we'll just use this turquoise that's in here. I guess I didn't bring it down. I didn't bring one of those funky colors down. I'm just staying with my good olds. And one of my other gals, um, the gal pals me, one of my artsy farts, so she's turned into a beautiful painter. Michelle, if you're watching, that's you. She um, had um, discovered a color. Um, from Windsor Newton and it's called smalt 
right? And it's like a blue pigment and it's really quite lovely. And the, see with these little ones, I can't see them. But I believe that this has got a violet pigment in it, if I remember. Oh my gosh, I gotta get some magnifying glasses. See, there's lettering there, and I, maybe if I squint a little bit. Okay, oh, PV15, is that the only thing? PV15, well, PV15 is what um, I think is the permanent rose, or so I thought. So the other thing that's really exciting about the Daniel Smith is they're coming up with absolutely brand new paints, brand new pigments based on semi-precious stones that are out there. This is rhodonite or rhodonite. And then we've got um, blue appetite genuine. I've also got tourmaline, which is a black. And what's really nice is it is a soft kind of a translucent. I got that right away. Yeah, black tourmaline, genuine. And I also have, um, let me think. There was another one. Uh, it's it's a really nice, this rhodonite uh, genuine is really, really pretty. That's it right here. But it's a soft, it's not staining, so it lifts. It's a really super pretty color. Um, it's very close to the quinacridone rose, but lighter. Like it's, you know, you can see actually here. I'll move this out of the way. Okay, so there's the quin rose. And there's the appetite. You see the slight difference? So this would be really nice as a graduated wash to use the two of them together too if you wanted to do that. Keep the differences. So um, anyway, I was looking for... Uh, I was looking for a really nice lighter uh, cobalt turquoise and of course I got distracted by these, all these other yummy colors. And maybe I will use this smalt. Oh, there's the perlene green I was talking about last night and undersea green. So these are the three that you see in my, in my uh, stash. You won't see any other greens. I do have a hooker green, but I keep that down there at the studio and I talk about it when I do my watercolor classes. So, and then here's uh, Garbazol Violet. This is a beautiful, this is very rich. That's also Daniel Smith. And I, and you know, like I said, I, um, um, I haven't used the Titanium White. I actually been using the Windsor Newton um, gouache. Here it is. So there's the designer gouache. I like it because it's very um, pale, it's very light. You get into the titanium white, which this is, and that's super opaque, whereas this is almost like a semi-transparent uh, when, you, uh, when you put it on, and I like that. It's, it's not classed as a transparent, it's classed as an opaque, but like I said, if you go uh, side by side, you'll see that this one has, it's not as dense. It, this isn't as dense as this is, if that makes any sense. Okay. So, but the other thing I wanted to share with you is I have had these for quite some time and I'm so grateful I didn't have these in that box when my Daniel Smiths were taken from me by someone and they didn't return it. I, I still, it breaks my heart. I uh, have a whole set of Daniel Smiths and they were the big tubes as well. And um, I, never, I never got them back and it just breaks my heart. It's a huge investment dollar wise. Anyway, these are so much fun. These are called Daniel Smith Extra Fine. And what they are, they're actually um, mica-based watercolors. So they've been around for a long time. Daniel Smith's had them for a long time. They just didn't really have them in a golds or anything. I have used these, as you can obviously see. I've used them over the years uh, quite a bit. This is an inference silver. So it just gives a very light silvery finish. This one is the pearlescent shimmer. And so I've actually got two of those. Um, and then there's the blue and there's the green. So this is if you want to add a little bit of a shimmer to any, any green base, this is to a blue base. So you could add that to red as well. And it looks really cool. So, I mean, I've had them for a while and they're just so much fun to use. Okay, 
So I'm just going to get rid of these now and give myself some room and we're going to get going with this little guy. So I think what I will do is I'm going to do maybe, um, um, we'll do the same thing like I did with her and we'll choose, um, maybe we'll choose yellows to go with him. Um, a bright yellow so it comes out like a bright green. But I want to use this, oh and that's smalt. So let's see what that's going to look like, uh, maybe against. Yeah, maybe we could do that because that's fairly dark. Oh man, I hate that. I um, I just slightly squeezed it and now it's shooting out like crazy. So the next time I open that up, that's going to all be mushed. I usually always put my tubes into a pan right away, but that's okay. So we've got this wet. Let's add a little more water. And then we've got, we're going to add some water to this one. Clean water. We're going to make a puddle over here. See where I got, see just a corner of that. And then I'm going to also make use of this one here too. I'm going to, I've got to be careful because I think that that, um, the smalt's got a, it's a bit of a purpley in there. It's kind of, oh, it's a red blue. It's a beautiful red blue. Look how vibrant that is. It's almost like a, like a, a red royal blue. <laughs> okay, so that's actually going to look really nice. So that's going to be interesting. So the yellow with that, as the, the light is part of our trio of colors, that's going to be very, very interesting. Okay, so there we've got our little puddle. Okay, so that's good. So let's get this all rinsed out. Now let's wet this area out so that we can make our nice little variegated wash. So variegated wash is that you want to be sure that you have the entire area. I'm not going to do all this here up here. I'm just going to do partly because I want that to be um, a different color and, we, and then we'll just kind of blend the colors in. So of course this area isn't as big. Almost went, almost went into the paint. All right. I'm not going to do the ears just yet. Let's just concentrate on the head. Because I like to have it a little bit darker in, on the inside. This She's got hers darker on the outside tips, but that's okay. I'm always thinking about, where is the light source? But I guess for this type of picture, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So we're going to go in with our turquoise. Ooh, look at how lovely that is. Isn't that fun? Oh. Okay, so let's drop some of that down. Now let's come in with the schmalt. Yeah. Ooh, boy. So you want to make sure you're dabbing in with the other color. So it encourages the mixing. Now we'll come, I'll come back and pick up those puddles. Now I'm gonna come in with some of this yellow. Ho, ho, ho. See, overlap. Clean that out and come in with some clean yellow. Yeah, we'll come in with some clean yellow here. Here we go. Okay, let's encourage that to mix. Ooh, I gotta come up, I gotta lift some of this up. You see that? All right. Lift some of this up here, the puddles. Come in with the thirsty brush. I can always drop some more color on there as it starts to dry. And let's just encourage some of that mixing. So the yellow really kind of took over the smoke. Oh, that started going outside the lines, why? Remember I said yesterday it could be the poor, you know, poor quality of paper. Now if this was arches, that wouldn't go anywhere where my water wasn't, right? So it only goes where the water is. And um, so obviously the sizing on this isn't ideal. So it's um, absorbing outside of where I'm asking it to go or where I'm placing the water. It's kind of dulled that out a little bit there. So I'm going to wait. So the thing about this now is what's going to happen is I'm going to have to make his head a little bit bigger in order to 
you know, capture that. That went outside the lines there. Oh well. So let's just drop a little bit of the turquoise up in here. I like this turquoise. Okay, of course that's going to be more green now. It's going to turn to a green, nice bright green. I want to add a, just a little bit more turquoise in here. I love this turquoise, wowzers. It's really nice. Okay, I'll let that spread out. I'm going to turn this a little bit just so I don't have to smear anything or drops anything. Then I'm just going to kind of come in and do the ear now. I'm going to leave a wet, a uh, a. Uh, uh, a dry spot there and I got my head tilted a little bit so that I can see where the water is so it's just a little area and the same over here I'm not going ah okay see that it's the papers buckled okay we'll just leave that but I'll, I'll, I'll just come over here I'm not gonna touch that I can bleed it in after you know what, maybe I'll just do it solid. You've got solid blue ears, right? Let's just do that. Because that's already running in every, anyway, so. Okay. And I'll just do it here too, because that's turquoise there. I'm not going to fuss over that because it's too small right now. If I had a smaller liner, like a brush, like a rigger would work on this. Uh, a rigger would be great to work on this fine area. What I'm going to do right here though, I think I'll add just, I'm just going to take a little bit of that yellow. I like how that's mixing. I wish that this camera was better and you could see how nice this looks. It's really yummy looking. Okay, so what color should we I think um, I, just, I think I'm liking. I'm gonna pick up some of this, so it's just so he has some of his mummy orange in there. You know what I mean? His mummy colors. So he's got a little bit of mummy's DNA. So let's take care of his horns now. Ooh. All right. So I touch the water. And up come, I'm going to just tip it this way though. See how I got a puddle at the bottom here? I'm going to lift. There we go. Alright, let's go in with that beautiful new gamboge. Water that down just a little bit. Oops, I got a hair on there. Um, Tibetan um, 432 Hertz soundtrack on. Um, it's just so calming. I like how the, I like how this went. I'm I'm happy about that. Um, you know, if you notice, I am kind of keeping in with the complementary colors. Of course, blue and green are complementary, but blue and orange are, and this will play off of that i'm not mixing with it but this is green so the orange and green are okay but they still will make a little bit of a gray when you mix complements together they'll oftentimes make a gray but this is so thin that i'm not even going to worry about that and um, i can um, come over so see how when i was talking last night i went oh okay well i can fix it all but look at how nice it turned out like i'm really pleased with the variegation on the face now on better paper a higher quality art um, watercolor paper or even a um a higher quality illustration paper or something the sizing is different like paper really is an important thing when you're using watercolors some people are okay with Strathmore is okay I um, I understand Strathmore a little bit this is the artist loft um, it's supposed to be level two which is artist grade but I find that it's a little bit too absorbent I like to be able to um, well probably maybe if I had a soap if I soaked all of these first and then just let them dry, then maybe it wouldn't have bled out so much. But 
we, we, you know, yeah, you learn as you go. But um, I, that's why I say I always just stick with arches because of its consistency and I know exactly how it's going to work. So let's, um, let's, his, let, let's leave his little messy face. <laughs> oh, look, what a mess. It looks, it looks messy, but it looks messy now, but it'll clean up really nice. We'll, we'll, make, that, we'll make that happen. Okay, so let's go in now. We're going to do all the, the spaces in between. So I'm going to wet it down with this nice little thirsty brush. Go in between. So his aren't as tight as hers, which is nice because it makes it easier to paint around too. I think, um, see with this one here, I did cool, cool tones in the background and then warm in the patches. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to stay with that same, oh, I didn't need to go all the way down, but being as I don't really have, um, a lot of space to cover, I'll probably come through this fairly quickly and, um, that shouldn't take too long. I got my head tilted here. Now, I don't know if you notice this or not. Does it look like a, it's a little gray? Well, that means I still had a little bit of this pigment on there, so the color was just slightly, the water was slightly colored. But that's fine. It, it allowed me to, I'm coloring over it with this color anyway and in this particular instance, but it's not ideal. It's not what you want, typically. You, um, you want your water clean because you don't want to pollute your colors, right? So here we go. Just drop this in randomly all up and down. And I'll drop some yellow in there too, of course. A little bit pigment, add a little bit more pigment to it. It's a bright color. Okay, now schmalt. I like it. I like the name schmalt. Okay, let's add some smalt. I got a little bit too much on that. this here brush cool okay now we'll drop some yellow little some little yellow spots in there eh? I'm kind of keeping it these are really nice colors I think it's gonna make it a nice to look at um, so when you're using complements or analogous um, you're creating color harmonies and the eye really likes that it's like singing a song you know it's like a poetry and things flow together nicely and we as artists want to do that with our artwork too you want to be able to have your artwork sing to the viewer speak and just take you away from all the noise for a little while. 
I know um, it's one of the main reasons I love art so much. And it could be said that, yeah, it could be an escapist. It could be an escape tool, but so what? It sure beats drugs. You know, getting addicted to medications that are worse for you, right? This is therapy for me, too, as well. Um, you know, keeps me sane in a crazy world. And especially these days, if you can get down and... Um, really um, do these wonderful, like it doesn't have to be crazy. I mean, look at how simple this picture was. Mind you, probably the patchworks <laughs> for some might not be that simple, but it re in reality, it is a very simple picture. You could even just do one single big giraffe head and do the whole head, a multitude, a whole kaleidoscope of variegated colors, make the entire thing wet, and then just drop a whole bunch of colors in, excuse me, but keep bearing in mind that your opposite colors, if they mix together, will make a gray and it'll look like mud. So that way you can, what you can do is, you know, drop all these colors, but keep spaces between, you know, um, as much space as you can in between so that they don't blend too quickly. And um, as they dry, then you can tease them together. And then that's a lot of fun there, isn't it? Okay, so that is drying. So we could speed this up a little bit. I think I've got the hair dryer plugged in. Nope, I do not. Be right back. because the outlets in here have a power bar on it and we, I don't want to overload the circuits. even dull up the green in here too and I think I'd like to go outside of these leaves with a very vibrant color but you know what I might do I might actually even maybe take a colored um, so like an ink pen and do that um, you know I'm not violating anything I went with a gel pen and ink pen on here so maybe I can finish that off with um, a nice little ink pen and that'll really help that little vine of leaves so this is looks pretty cool it's nice and dry so now let's punch that up with, I, I, I was gonna go with the maroon, but I don't think I will. I think I'm gonna go with this really deep red in here. It's kind of like an orangey red. So we have to make sure that we've got, so it's goopy. It's like right out of the tube consistency. So that's gonna be nice, easy to mix. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this down. This actually was the purple, the um, Windsor Violet mixed with the Burn Umber to make that really dark color. So let's put this red there. See how orangey warm that is? It's a real warm red. Okay, so let's add some water to that. It's very dull. But we'll, we'll perk that up. I think that this color right here, uh, it looks kind of dull with this light, but that's a really deep coppery color. I think that would look really nice over top of that red. 
Okay, so I got to get rid of some of the water in here. Like this is a very dull pinky orangey red. I'll go here because it's it's really loaded. So you just lightly dab it down, right? You don't want to put too much pressure on there because then it will. Um, So if you have a chance, I don't know if anybody's been to the other videos. I've got the paint along lily and the paint along daffodil um, that I put on uh, my YouTube station. You can always go to my Scrum Sisters. If you look down in the comment section or the description section below this video, you'll see my Facebook page. Uh, Scrum Sister Studio and that's where you can kind of check out a lot a lot of where my work is a lot of stuff that I do and I will post that's usually where I post the links to the YouTube videos as well um, I am by no means a media queen once upon a time I used to do it I would it was a very big part of my career but um, it's been 10 years since I left that engineering design field and then just uh, for the last eight years, I worked in um, retail. I did, you know, just part-time because I didn't want to go back to the engineering. It was just too stressful. So at the age of 50, I went back into the work field after a little sabbatical. Um, I went right head first back into the arts, picking it up. And I said, I'm going to die in the arts. I'm going to die happy. And so that's what I'm going to do. You know, for a dull red, this look at how bright that looks against the blue. So anyway, for the last 10 years, and it's been actually since 2009 when I left my engineering field, and um, I took a sabbatical, and so that, to try to figure out what I want to do for the next phase of my life, because far too young to retire, obviously, and... Um, well, you don't know that, do you? When I say obviously, it's like you should know. <laughs> How would you know? So there you go. <clears throat> and I've been doing um, as much art, and I've been taking master classes in uh, felting. I've taken several master classes from some of the greats, Fiona Duffy, Pam de Groot, uh, Katya. Uh, there's another Russian gal. I've done about six. Oh, Ray Wolna. She's from... Um, Australia, she's a really good, uh, she's an amazing felt master. There's lots of wonderful felt artists out there. So that's a, a medium that I chose to try master as well. And um, just, you know, um, you never stay still, right? Watercolors will always be my baby. Um, but now I'm actually working with felt. Um, I've, I'm quite uh, advanced in, the, in my felting skills. And so now I'm taking it. Um, to introduce paper and sumi ink and the like to my um, my felted works now too so I I like to make sculpted uh, felted jewelry and 2d pictures things like that so you'll have to check it out if you go to the scrum sisters page or pattycook.ca I try to keep that page as updated as possible I'm not a, like I said I'm not really much into the media aspect anymore I just want to keep my life nice and simple and, um, you know, like I said, I do classes at my studio so that I can pay the rent on the studio uh, so that I can keep it and I have that place for myself to go to. So what I'm going to do um, before we go, what color should we do as eyes? Let's give him the same color eyes as his mom and we'll do those, uh, that quinacridone gold. It's such a beautiful color and because this face is now... Now this is on pretty dark actually. I've got this fairly thick. I don't wanna. That is pretty thick. Hmm. Well. I guess it's okay. So let's take that dryer. We're getting down to the getting down to the wire. And I'm going to post the finish up on my Facebook page. And I'll 
also take a picture of this and I'll have this posted as my thumbnail on the uh, on the video and then I'll see if I can actually even add a skill at the end I'm not I'm just getting onto the videos again I have a bunch of videos on another a YouTube page um, um, patio's place I believe it's pat this is patty cook and then of course I my very first for years I used patio's place.com or whatever but I have um, but I got put in YouTube jail because I posted some cons what they thought was conspiracy I'm a truther and I'll always be a truther and if I put stuff on there that I think that the world should know then I'm not gonna you're not gonna stop me so anyway I just opened up another account but on that account like I'm no longer in jail there now of course but um, so I'm just kind of going over top of this I'm gonna give him like a little bit of a you know a little bit of um, detail but I'm gonna wash that out see I'm gonna blend that in I'm not gonna make it hard lined I'm gonna pick up any excess So you can tell that these are not staining colors because they they scrambled quite nicely. Didn't leave a hard edge behind, except for maybe the um, the smalt, I guess was if anything. But you know what I kind of like about it? If you you can't see it here, but when you come up really close, can you see like the little? They almost look like little fish scale lines from where the color has settled. Of course we'll do his nostrils. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take some of that burnt umber with some of the smalt. Right? And that makes like a smoky gray. And then that's what we'll paint his nostrils. It's kind of a really super watery color so I'll probably have to go over it again. Right now that's really wet, so it's going to look dark. Watercolor, uh, as I've said many times before, it dries lighter than it than it's painted. So if it looks if it looks light when you're painting it, then it's really gonna be light when you're done. If it looks dark, this'll this'll um yeah, I just love how it turned out. I like the little patch yellow there, that kind of nice little. It's almost like a patch in a sense, you know, that the fur gives away to this. So I'm really sort of liking this, eh? Now the background, I'm probably going to just come with maybe a flat and I'll load it with, uh, with water and just come around once this is all dry and I'll very gently come around with water and I'll just do a, a pale wash of of a blue you know because they're they're very tall animals and uh, but it is an abstract so maybe I could do a oh yeah you know what I'll do it a really light purple I'll do a violet wash in the background that'll pop all that out it'll be a nice cool color too off in the distance okay so um, really not a lot I can do but I do I, I have to get these dry in order so I can show you how easy is to apply the mica powder on top. Oh, I blew his nose. <laughs> but that's okay. At least it, it still looks alright. And this got blown out there too, so I did have too much. See, that's the thing. Um, I'm so used to doing my arches. I trust it, and I know that it's not going to go where I've put the water. It's not going to go outside of that. Okay, so let's go in with this really nice coppery metallic. So I'm going into the, the water that I've designated for that. We can move this out of the way now. So how about I just put this right there. Look at you, when you see this up close too, you can almost see, 
see the surface is almost alive. You can see the mica moving around. See it? So beautiful. One of these days, if I get a really good quality camera, I can zoom in on this sort of thing. So really, I'm not painting. I'm just going to dab it on the surface, right? And so that actually will dull that red down a little bit too. It won't make it as vibrant. However, it'll certainly be an eye catcher because of all that mica. Look at how far I can go. I, I haven't even been, I don't even have to see how far I can go before I got to load my brush again. Okay. Holy moly. See, I lost some pigment there, but that doesn't matter because look at that. I just filled filled it in with the mica powder. This is uh, this is the long nose or the long I thought it was my little guy, which is good though because I really do want. So that actually lasted quite a while for just a tiny little point, eh? Okay. Look at that. All right. So it does look dull in the window there or in the camera, but. Believe me, it is really quite lovely. It's very rich, coppery, deep coppery color. So then when I outline all of those, those are just gonna punch right out. Now for his eyes, are they dry? Yeah. Okay, so that's dry. It's gooey. It's like fresh out of the tube. Oh my gosh. It has like almost like this mercury kind of a consistency surface so that's actually quite a bit too it's a little bit goes a long way on here that's for sure okay so there we go and I think what I'm gonna do I could have done this pinky rose color too I suppose but I'm gonna use this actually no I'm gonna use this one over here one right here it's got lots of water look how goopy that is can you see oh boy can you see the surface of that look at that <laughs> oh it's like gold soup wouldn't that be nice I wouldn't have to worry about my studio then would I I could make gold soup okay I'm gonna just drop this Oh, I already did. Oh, well, I'm mixing colors. I forgot where I was. I meant to do this up here, but I do want to water that down. That's quite a bit. Yeah. So I like how I that's thick, and then we thin it out. So I'll do the same here. So I hope that you all have a lovely Easter weekend, wherever you are and whatever you're going to be doing. I completely forgot, and I normally will cook a turkey, but, um, and I figured it was too late because really anymore, it's got to the point where you have to stand in line at the grocery store. And you, there, of course, it's the social distancing with that, and they only allow so many people in the grocery store. I just thought, oh my gosh, it's too late for that. The weather was just terrible um, here. We had hail one minute, rain the next, sunshine the next. It's, it was just a whole ball of wax out there. I'm actually going over this with this really super pale just to give our little funky tree leaf here. Or maybe it's even a pod. Who knows? To be whatever we want it to be. I'm just going to go over the whole thing because it's not 
making the color shift at all. It's actually very transparent over the surface. Oh, that looks so nice. Okay, turn my head here like this. So I will, um, that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm going to let that dry. And um, I will clean these edges up with my pen. So this here is um, the Sakura, the Micron. That's a 05. And it says Archival Ink. Right? So that's what I typically use. I just found this on the floor. Must have fell out of the zippered bag that I was looking at for. Um, so this is also a Spectrum Noir. These are pretty good um, art, pens, art pens too. So these are fairly thick, so they'll give a nice thick line. I'll uh, probably just figure something out over there. Maybe I'll put some little things dangling off the side. Or I'll just trim it. It's no biggie. Okay, everyone, I hope you had a good time, and if there's any questions, I think I gave you the information on this yesterday on where you can where you can get the metallic paints. I got them at Amazon. This one here, this one right here, is it that one? No, it's uh, da, 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 right here, yeah. So this one here. This is called the Komorebi watercolor. There's six shimmering colors. They're $23.94 at Amazon. Um, that's with the $35 purchase. I don't believe I got free delivery with Prime. I don't know because I logged into my account and that's what it said. So these ones here are called Starry Colors. I don't have the box tops beside me like I did yesterday. But um, that, that's called Kiritaki, these ones here right you can see all these six colors here and these are 2571 Canadian or 1751 with a $35 order I think it's 2571 um, shipping included and or 1751 with a $35 order so you know you can order some black pens or something too some art pens so um, thank you for hanging out with me and if you're so inclined to help me out pay my rent um, please um, go to the links in the description box below and I'll see you come back subscribe I don't know how to do a subscribe button maybe I'll learn that too and uh, then you'll be notified when I do any more fun stuff like this so thanks for hanging out with me and I, uh, I hope that your Easter weekend is a very blessed one stay warm stay safe and uh, there is no fear all is well